What I'd like to talk about now is selecting objects inside of 3D Studio Max. There is obviously more than one way that we can do this, and it's an essential part of your learning and how you interact with the user interface. So in order to help us, I've got a very simple scene here. It's got a camera in it, we've got a couple of lights here, uh, we've got a backdrop scene, and we've got lots of teapots that are in various positions on the floor and the wall. And really, the reason why I want to get into this sort of more than anything else is because that 3D Studio Max is an object-orientated program. Now, what that means is that each object within this scene, whether it's the light or the cameras or the teapots, carries its own individual sort of set of instructions that uh, 3D Studio Max are allowed to, is allowed to perform on it. So, for example, if I select the, the backdrop here, uh, you can see I've got an editable polygon object and it's got a UV mapping uh, modifier on there. I had to, first of all, sort of select that object, first of all, before I could apply the UVW mapping modifier onto it. If I select the camera, you can see down here in our command panel, if I just change the size of that slightly, you can see we've got a whole set of instructions to do with the camera. The same for the light here, and the same for the skylight, as well as the teapots as well. So I need to know how to, to select those, what happens if I want to select multiple objects in here. So each one of them needs to be selected in a, maybe a slightly different way, and each one needs to have instructions or modifiers passed onto it. Now, these instructions obviously vary with each type of object, and because each type of object can respond slightly differently, so for example, um, the light here will have certain things that I could apply onto it that I couldn't apply onto a teapot, and vice versa. But the way that we do this is you select the object first, and then you, you do something to it. Uh, you know, apply a modifier or give it a new set of instructions, whatever that may be. And that's referred to as a noun verb interface. It's because 3D Studio Max is object orientated. Now it's referred to as a noun verb interface because you obviously you select the object first, that's the noun, and then you do something to it, that's the verb. So really that's what we're going to be talking about as we go forwards. We're going to be talking about sort of basic selection of objects, uh, how do you select with region, by name, how you create selection sets, how we can create selection filters, um, all sorts of different things like that. So, you know, we're going to go get into quite a bit of depth about this, and then again, how we can group things as well. So, for example, I could group uh, all of these, this whole scene together, or I could group just the geometry, or there's all sorts of different things I can do. And that's really what we're going to be talking about next. So, the most basic way that you can select any object within your scene is by coming up here and using the select object mode here. It's just a very simple icon click and what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize the screen here in the perspective view just so that things are nice and easy for us to see and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click once and there you go I've selected this object and you can see now that in my command panel on the right hand side I've got all the information here that I need to sort of work with that object. So it's a teapot, I can move around my scene and I can have a look at it. So yes, it is definitely a teapot. I can change the number of segments in that teapot and if I press F4 to show my wireframe outline and if I zoom in on just that object, you can see as I change the number of segments there, they increase and they decrease. And if I want to deselect that object, Using this method, what I'll do is I'll find a blank bit of space over here, outside of my little scene that I've got there, and I'll just left click once. And you can see that nothing's selected now because I've not got any information in my control panel. The same is true for any one of my other objects. If I select the backdrop here and I've got that selected, if I now want to move and I want to select another one of the teapots, all I need to do is hover my mouse over that teapot, and you can see here it says teapot 004. There's probably a 007 in there as well somewhere. Uh, and if I just left click now, what I've done is I've jumped with my selection from the backdrop to the teapot. So very, very simple, very, very easy. There doesn't have to be anything more involved in it than that. But what happens if I'm working on this and I've got a very, very complicated scene and I think, well, actually what I want to do is I, I want to be moving this around, but I want to make sure that I, I don't, deselect it 
because obviously you can see that as I'm as I'm clicking here, what happens if I click again and I'm just oh, now you see where my cursor is? It's right on the edge of that green teapot. Now I would have thought, you know, ordinarily speaking, that I was about to select that teapot and that should be the case. But apparently it's not because the ray that I've shot into the scene has missed the teapot and hit the backdrop. So really what I want to do is I want to make sure that I keep focus on this and that I don't deselect it. And there's a very, very simple way that we can do that. And it's down here at the bottom of the screen and it's called the selection lock toggle. And if I left click on that, you'll see that what we've got here is the little sort of padlock goes from being gray to being yellow. And that means now that I can't, you can see I'm, I'm clicking around in this scene. I don't know if you can hear the mouse or not, but I'm clicking around quite a lot and I really can't select anything at all. So that's really very, very useful. One thing I would say that you've got to be careful of is that the keyboard shortcut for the selection lock toggle is the space bar. And what I find is that a lot of people, when they first come to 3D Studio Max, you're going to find that because your key, a lot of your keyboard shortcuts are on the left-hand side, as you're working with the program, you might find that your, your thumb just accidentally nudges, and you can see my cursor's nowhere near the actual icon itself, but I'm that, uh, that selection lock toggle is going on and off, and it's because I'm pressing the space bar. Now, you might find that you accidentally press the space bar while you're working, and then you don't notice that this icon has turned itself yellow. Despite the fact this is a very dark interface, it's very easy to miss. So you might find that as you're working sometimes, you think, oh, what's the problem? I can't, I can't select anything. Make sure that down here you don't have this little selection lock toggle on, unless, of course, that's what you want. Another way that I can select maybe just a group of objects for example, just the geometry or just the light. Say I'm working on my scene here, and if I pull out a little way and I rotate a little bit, let's say, for example, I want to select just my camera. Yeah, and I've got, this is the view that I have, but it's going to be difficult for me to maybe select just the camera or just the target or whatever it is. What I can do in that instance is I can come up here and I've got these things called selection filters. And these selection filters are incredibly useful. I use them all the time when I'm working. In actual fact, it's one of the few things I can put my hand up and say these are genuinely properly useful. Because what I can do is I can say here, cameras. Okay, so that's my selection filter now. So with that selection filter, I can now not select any lights or any geometry. I don't have anything locked, you'll notice down here. But I can select the camera or its target. If I change that to just lights, I can now select my skylight. I still can't select geometry. If I turn it to all, I can select whatever is in my way. So it's very, very useful. Or in fact, if I say uh, shapes, because there aren't any shapes in the scene, it doesn't matter what I do, where I click, because there aren't any shapes, nothing will be selected. So again, you've got two things that you need to be careful of here when you're selecting objects or when you're using these types of um, selection sets. When you're selecting an object, make sure that, you know, if you want to keep jumping from one object to another, as I'm doing here, make sure that you don't have your selection lock toggle switched on unless you want to. And also, if you were selecting just cameras or you had your selection filter on set to cameras, that if you want to select, if you want to select geometry, you either make sure that you've got geometry selected or you go to all and that way you can select anything that you want in your scene.